I think it was Florida, that weird COVID 2020 season when Tennessee played Florida in December. I think it was the Florida game. And Jeremy Pruitt said on the post-game Zoom, the gap is closing. And I think everybody just sat there and rolled their eyes and said, no, it's not. No, it's not. The gap is closing between Tennessee and Georgia, Tennessee and Alabama. You can see that from a numbers perspective in spring practice. When you sit a lot of guys, you have numbers you can go. How much more does Tennessee need to close that gap between Georgia and Alabama? Is it as simple as a couple more cycles being in top 10 and bringing in, in prospects to get the roster exactly where you need to be? What's that gap look like now, Brent? Well, I mean, I think I think Georgia and Alabama are in two different places right now. Um, I'm not saying Alabama is falling apart or anything like that. They just had their maybe arguably the best recruiting class they've yep. ever put together. So it's not like it's not like the the wheels are off in Tuscaloosa. Um, but but Georgia's where Alabama was several years ago, in my opinion, with the way they've stacked recruiting classes and, and the buy-in that they've had. Now, here's the question at Georgia. Do you can can you continue to have the buy in that Kirby Smart has had? And and I'll give Kirby Smart credit. I've made fun of it, but for whatever reason, coming off a national championship winning season, Kirby Smart convinced everyone in the Georgia locker room that they were terrible. Saban did it for for and, years. That's what, and, that's the Saban, right? And nobody. And I don't know how you do that. I mean, I, I don't know how you convince. You know, I mean, you hear these guys talking about. Well, I mean. Nobody picked us to do anything. Really? Like, everybody picked you to be right where you were at. And so their ability to block the outside noise and not get complacent um, it was re it has really been remarkable. Can that continue? Uh, Tennessee's obviously, I think when you're climbing, it's easier to climb than it is to stay at the top. I still think Tennessee's got a ways to climb uh, in, in terms of, of catching Georgia. I'm not saying they can't beat Georgia, but I don't think they're as talented or as deep across the board as Georgia is right now. Um, so I, I still think there's, I still think it's a good bit of weight. I don't think Georgia's coming back to the pack anytime soon, Grant. No, I think I don't know about the gap is closing as much as Tennessee's taking the steps towards closing that gap. Just in terms of you needed a 10, 11 win season just to show that you can win consistently and show that you can win big games. They needed that Alabama game, the optics of that Alabama game and how big it was and how emotional the night it was. And for them to be up, what was it, 28-10 in the first half and be down in the fourth quarter and having that fumble pick six uh, on the missed exchange there uh, with Alabama and, and still find a way to win that football game and to win it the way they did with that drive there in the final, whatever it was, 30 seconds. So, I think for me, it's less about where the talent is. You know, you trust Hypo and what he's going to do offensively and the numbers he's going to put up. Now, they, they got pretty well whipped at Georgia last year. That I think that tells you kind of where the two rosters are. But they needed that Alabama kind of game. They needed that Florida game where Anthony Richardson throws for 450 or whatever it was, and Tennessee still finds a way to win and play pretty and LSU. well. You, and LSU, too. Yeah, that's a great point. To go to Baton Rouge to play as well as they did at 11 a.m. kickoff from start to finish in that game. You just needed to see – that they could go and win big games and could be an 8 no team and ranked in the college football playoff and all that stuff, and 10-win season, 11-win season. I think those are the first steps towards building what they have because Heupel's pushed all the right buttons. He seems like an extreme players coach who's recruiting well because of the success he's had and what they've established in just two years. So I think they're taking the right steps towards closing that gap, when it, whatever it is. Robin, Identity's is important, Rob Lewis. <laughs> What were you saying, EC? I was going to say, you have, you have anything else to add in terms of what I was just going to say, for now? me, I mean, I don't – I am definitely not a, you know, stargazer or somebody that, you know, thinks that's the end-all, be-all. And I think Heifel has, has shown, you know, pretty emphatically in two years that he can win with some guys that, you know, are maybe not the, the most sought-after guys as recruits. But at, still, in, at, at this league, at, at the top of the mountain, I mean, I, I think you got to be – if you're going to beat Alabama and Georgia on Saturday, you got to beat them – in recruiting, and I, and I think ten, you know Tennessee's not winning a ton of those battles, but they are winning a few of them here and there now for for guys that, that just in the past, unless Tennessee just had some incredible tie, they had no chance against Alabama and Georgia, and that that's that's not the case now as as Heifel goes into his third full season. Tennessee football, yeah, I, I think it's about identity. I, I mean, ahead, I think Brent. it's the fact that they have an identity. I mean, you know that that's the. 
you're talking about closing gaps or this, or, and, and I don't know where, where all that's at I, with, with talent. Like I said, I, I think George is the most talented team in the country, but I think the biggest thing that Tennessee has right now that they haven't had the last 20 years, 15, 10, whatever, that, whatever you want to look at, however far back you want to take it is they have a brand and they have an identity and that identity has put Tennessee in a position that everybody's talking about them this off season because they know they're going to score points. They know they're going to play fast. They know the things that they are going to do, uh, which is something they they haven't had. And I think that's part of closing the gap too. You know, instead of, well, Tennessee's trying to figure out who they are while everybody's running away from them, Tennessee knows exactly who they are, which means now you're in a chase mode. And it's different, Rob, than what other teams are doing. And, and I think that gives Tennessee some uniqueness in the ability to, to compete with those guys. Yeah, I agree. And also, I mean, I know this is, isn't what you were saying, but I think that identity, that uniqueness, I think that, that bleeds over and has an effect on the recruiting trail. I mean, it may not appeal to every kid, but I think there are some kids that that the, you know, PlayStation numbers on offense, the, the light speed with which they play, I mean, I think that really appeals to some kids. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, everybody wants to go and have fun. Everybody wants to go and win. And then everybody wants to get their name known and go to the National Football League. And if you're scoring a whole lot of points and catching a whole lot of touchdowns, throwing a whole lot of touchdowns, that's... 100% appealing.